Yo, 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 how's it going? Hey, Mildew. Hello, Darkest Hour. Flowers of Algernon. Hope your Monday's going pretty well. Just getting set up here. Hello, Droolish. Monday. Don't know about you guys. Does Arduino software drain battery faster for you guys? That's a great question. That's a great question. I haven't noticed particularly any change for me, but I guess my, my laptop's usually plugged in. Yeah. OG working on a desktop. That's what I'm doing right now. All right, how about we get into it? What I want to do is do a brief discussion of the lab one procedure. And so if you're an online student, you can come back to this and um, I'm gonna be posting data soon. I'll try to get that out tonight. Um, so when you're looking at the data and you're doing the analysis that you'll have to do for the lab report, you'll have some picture in your mind of where this data came from. And if you're an on-campus student, you can check this out as well. I think this will help you when you go to lab. Um, just to have seen how this works once before. Let me show you some of the equipment here. This is the top view, I guess. I have the accelerometer itself right here. Let's see if I can get this in focus here. It's always a little bit of a challenge. Come on, buddy. If I move you out of the way. Huh, 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 huh. How many G's does that support? Supposedly, it measures accurately plus or minus three G's of acceleration. So this is the ADXL335 accelerometer. And you can see there's some axes printed on here, X, Y, and Z. So it's a three axis accelerometer, measures in X, Y, and Z. And we have um, a couple pins on here. V in, that's where we're providing the voltage to this sensor. We're, pro we're providing 3.3 volts. Can you buy them larger? Yes. You certainly can. Uh, let's see, we got ground, and then we have the XYZ output voltage corresponding to the acceleration that comes out here. So we got those pins coming off here. And then I just have it go into the Uno. So let's see, we got the power, 3.3 volts. The black wire is going to ground. And then these three 
analog inputs, these are just um, the voltage readings that are corresponding to the accelerations in those three directions. Phil says, been using a 10G at work all week. Ooh. Well, I want to back up since the wire leads are very small. Up to 10 Gs. That's pretty sweet. Um, okay, so let's briefly talk about how an accelerometer works because it's really cool. So I'm going to go over to this because I have this lab procedure document open in here, but I want to go. So I have this section. How does an accelerometer work? So I'm going to show you this. Let's first look at the figure on the left. And I, I stole this figure from lastminuteengineering.com. So all of the credit goes to them here. But let me explain this figure. So first look at this orange structure. I'm going to call it like M because it has some mass. And um, this is made of polysilicone. And it's sitting on top of this gray, well, it's gray in the figure, the silicone wafer. And so it can move this direction or that direction, depending on the axis we're looking at. And there's these polysilicone springs that only let this suspended mass move so far. All right, so I kind of drew this at a tilted configuration because gravity affects this sensor as well as like shaking the sensor around from side to side. Uh, like if I tilt the sensor up this direction and if gravity's acting down, this mass is gonna slide down that way a little bit and the spring is gonna, you know, resist that motion. But, so th this is how the transduction happens. There's these plates that come off of this moving mass, and there's also some fixed plates on the wafer itself. And as this suspended mass moves around, it changes the distance between these plates and that actually changes the these act as a capacitor and it changes the capacitance so as the capacitance changes the voltage that's going to come off the sensor is also going to change so basically as we shift this sensor around So as gravity displaces this mass, or if we, like, I, I also made this figure. This, this figure on the right is just supposed to be um, like an analogous picture of what's going on. Like you have a spring on both sides. You have this mass that can slide around. And it's like relative distance kind of changes here. So gravity could cause this to to shift around as we change this tilt angle theta but imagine uh so i've had this little indicator y over here and that's supposed to represent like well, what if we just shake this like laterally side to side and you can imagine that would also shift this mass around in there so as we change the location of this mass it changes the capacitance and the voltage changing comes on. And this position changes with acceleration. Jubin asks, how many data points do we need for each angle? The manual says five seconds. I have six readings recorded, but not sure if that correlates to six seconds. Okay, got you. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit. The sample code that I provided, it has a delay in the loop of, I believe, 100 milliseconds. So roughly, the sensor grabs, I would say, 10 samples per second. So if you get like five seconds worth of data, you probably have like 
more like 50 samples. So if you only have six measurements recorded, that's probably less than a second's worth of data. Okay, but as we'll see, the readings are pretty static if you hold the sensor still once we get to the calibration. So I think six readings is probably okay. So if you were to use Newton's laws on this system I drew here on the right, you can actually solve for this displacement of the mass relative to the center of the wafer here. And I, and I went and solved for this right here. You can, you can check this again if you're, if you're curious. But the interesting thing about this is, so I, I have this variable a sub i, and this represents the inertial acceleration. And that, that's actually what we want to measure with this sensor. It's like the acceleration that the sensor is experiencing as we move it around. But because of how the sensor is built, this displacement, it's proportional to that inertial acceleration, but it also has this gravitational component. And these two are added together. So the thing is, when you're using an accelerometer, you're usually not just measuring the actual acceleration of the device, the inertial acceleration. You're also getting this gravitational acceleration, which is active even if the sensor is sitting totally still. So I make a little note down here. It's an interesting thing about accelerometers that ironically, you can't measure the inertial acceleration with this sensor unless you can subtract out the gravitational acceleration. Like if you want to get that inertial acceleration by itself, you got to be able to subtract this out. And how do you know what this gravitational acceleration is? Well, we know what G is, it's like 9.81 meters per second squared, but the component of G acting on the sensor depends on the tilt angle. So you need to know that angle theta. So in, in practice, we generally use accelerometers in combination with gyroscopes and magnetometers. And using like an accelerometer with these two sensors as well, it allows you to get that angular orientation information about the sensor theta. So does, does it not work if it's perfectly flat? Oh, if it's perfectly flat, then you don't have gravity acting along that axis. In which case, you can just perfectly get the inertial acceleration. But, but I mean like, in applications with an accelerometer, it's hard, um, rarely is it gonna be perfectly flat, you know? Often, if it's moving around, if it's attached to a UAV or, or a car, it's always tilting a little bit, so there's some gravity interfering. Just a little interesting fact about accelerometers. It's, it's a little more complex. So like they often, um, if you've heard of IMUs, inertial measurement units, they have a, a break, they have a board, a little chip like this one, but it has the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the magnetometer all on one piece so that they can take care of issues like this and, and, and do some other things as well. Okay, but that's the basic idea. When you see an accelerometer, it's, it's interesting. It's basically a spring mass system. And a mass is moving around depending on how you shake it. And that changes the distance between some plates and that changes the capacitance. And so a different voltage comes off. Okay, so um, let's talk about how we're gonna calibrate this. So this is the accelerometer we're working with. 
And um, because of this issue of wherever this is, this issue of trying to decouple the inertial and the gravitational acceleration, when we calibrate, we like to just keep the sensor totally still so that the inertial acceleration is zero. And if that's the case, um, the displacement of the mass is purely a function of the gravitational acceleration. And we're also going to put ourselves in a situation where we know what this angle theta is. So this is going to allow us to apply known gravitational accelerations to this device. And we're going to see what the sensor gives off. So we're going to know the acceleration being applied. Um, so the way that we're going to know what the angle is, is we have this... Um, Kind of just showing it sideways we have this angle jig and depending on where we slide this base plate that's going to change this angle in here and then i'm going to turn this like this zoom out a little more i'm going to put this accelerometer just right flat flush to the surface and um, we're going to be calibrating the x direction of this accelerometer we're not going to worry about the y and z we're just going to worry about one axis in this lab so x is right now i call this the in the lab report i actually call this the negative orientation of the x axis because x is pointing like up but as I move, if, as I make that angle bigger down there, you can see that's the angle. Oops. X is pointing away from gravity. So there's some component of gravity acting along that direction, pointing towards the floor. And so we're actually applying a negative acceleration to the x-axis in this case. I know it's a little weird, but x is pointing up, gravity is pointing down, so according to this coordinate system, that's a negative acceleration. But I can flip this around. Now the x-axis is pointing down. That's in the positive direction of gravity, and so I'm introducing a positive acceleration here. And as I increase this angle, I'm giving more and more gravitational acceleration because I'm getting more and more aligned with gravity. Or if I hold this sensor flat, one way to do that is just use this piece, set it down on a flat surface. And then if I just put this right on top here, with the x-axis pointing level. So um, there shouldn't be any gravity. I don't know how level this table is actually, but the, the point is if this is pointed perpendicular to gravity, then I should be introducing like zero Gs of acceleration right now. And the inertial acceleration is zero because I'm holding this perfectly still. So this angular jig is going to allow us to apply different accelerations here. Let's upload um, a sample code to this to to this accelerometer. We should have done that first to see what kind of readings come off of this thing. All right, I'm going to go over here. And this is the sample code that we're using for this lab. Um, so we define the analog pins. We're using zero, one, and two for the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. And then we're defining some integer variables to store the analog to digital reading for each axis. 
even though in the end we're only going to be concerned with the x-axis for this lab um, remember this is a 10-bit board so these values are going to be between 0 and 1023 so we're just establishing pins and variables right now and then in the setup I'm just establishing serial communication so that I can read data from the serial monitor, which is what we did in workshop two. And then in the loop, it's really simple what we're doing. First, I get an accelerate or I get a, a, an analog to digital reading from the, the pin that's monitoring the X axis, then the Y, then the Z. And then I just print all those to the serial monitor. And then I added a delay command right here. Now, usually we don't want to use the delay command for a lot of applications, but in this case, the loop is so simple. We're just getting a reading, printing it, and then just waiting a little bit. It's perfectly acceptable to use delay in this case. So we get these readings, we print them, then we wait 100 milliseconds, and then we do it all over again in this loop. So I'm going to go to tools, I'm going to make sure my board is correct and I'm just going to upload this. Okay, it uploaded and now I want to go to the serial monitor so that you guys can see the readings that are coming off here. Let's get this camera on here. So check this out. I'm going to move this accelerometer around. Right now I'm holding it pretty still. And so each of those values is pretty stationary. But, uh, okay, so the X direction is kind of pointing this way. I'm gonna try to shake it along the X direction. So the X axis reading, you're seeing it's changing like, it's going to down to like 200, 300. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's use the serial plotter. This will make it a little more easy to see. And I'm also gonna, I'm gonna remove this delay function. I'm gonna comment it out. So I'm just gonna temporarily disable it. So we're gonna just, we're gonna get readings really fast. So I'm gonna upload this to the board, saving this removal of the delay function. And then I'm gonna open the serial plotter. Oh, it says the serial monitor is already open. So I have to close that first. Now I can open the plotter. Okay, now you see three lines going across there. And they're all basically still. So that, that's the acceleration along the three axes. Well, rather, it's the analog to digital value that's like proportional to the acceleration. So now let's shake it along the X direction. And you see one of those lines is kind of moving like crazy and the other two are moving a little bit. So that one that's moving the most must be X. Um, what is this for? We're calibrating an accelerometer. Okay, now let's look at, um, so the Z axis is coming out through the top. I'm gonna like try to move this up and down and a different line should go crazy. Okay, so that very top line should be the z-axis. That was moving the most. And then this teal line must be y, which uh, let's, try to sh let's try to get that teal line to activate. It looks like I have to move it like this way. So pretty sweet, right? So there's, um, it's measuring acceleration along each of those three axes. Now, um, let me also show you this because we said that um, right now I'm holding it still so there's only gravitational acceleration acting so how about I just tilt it so that the X is pointing straight up but it's still so look at the readings now you see how like two of the lines traded places that's because um, there's no inertial acceleration, but the gravitational acceleration has changed. Let's bring it back to where it was. Can you serial log a time component? Yes, Phil, you totally could do that. I actually, 
I made another code that, that does that. So I turned it this way. Are we given accelerometers in lab? Can't find one in the kit. Yeah, so the accelerometer is gonna be in the lab. I wish that an accelerometer came with the kit. I really do. But you, these are also really cheap. You can pick, like I think this one's maybe four or five dollars. Um, okay, but your phone has an accelerometer on it. Um, so it, like, how can your phone tell if it's tilted? Well, it's because of this kind of behavior. We have the gravitational acceleration that changes. And so depending on that, I'm, I'm able to determine the, the orientation of the device. Uh, another thing, so accelerometers are very, very sensitive. If you think of um, like a step counter, like how does like a Fitbit count your steps? Like if you gently tap this, you see all these like jitters. Uh, and it, I'm actually not even hitting it very hard, but like just a little bit of disturbance can, can log a peak. So even like little, little jolts like that, it's very sensitive. It can just log, log that. Um, okay, so let's get to the calibration piece. We, we played around with the sensor a little bit. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify our code so that it just spits out the x-axis information because we're going to calibrate the x-axis um, so that's that's really easy to do i'm even going to remove all these labels i'm just gonna i'm just gonna comment everything out and if i change this to print line now it'll just print a column of these values. Let's turn this delay back on. I think those watches are also based on arm swing and other stuff too. Oh, that, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, Drew. I think you're right. Okay, so now I'm gonna upload this. And so now let's open the serial monitor again. Now it's just printing the analog to digital value for the X axis. And um, I got rid of all the labels because I know this one, what this is. How will online students access the accelerometer if it is in the lab? Do we have to buy one? No, no, no. If you're an online student, unfortunately, you, you won't be able to go through this lab procedure. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send you this data and you'll be able to, to analyze this data. That's just one of the unfortunate parts of this semester that I can't give the online students everything. Like I'm trying my best, uh, but couldn't get everybody an accelerometer. Okay. Um, So, okay, we have this x-axis, you kind of see this. It's pointed up the jig right now. And yeah, 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 no problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this to a couple known points. And actually I need to, let me open up this calibration. Cause in the procedure, it tells you the ones that I want you to try. This step five, we're gonna hold the accelerometer just stationary, fixed at 11 different angles and record a couple of seconds of data. So we want zero degrees, and then we're gonna try four different angles between zero and 90. Uh, 90 degrees, four different angles between zero and negative 90. And 
depending on the angle, that'll change the gravitational acceleration. So we're effectively applying different known accelerations to the accelerometer. And then we're just gonna record the data. Um, so let's record, yeah, I say record approximately five seconds of data at each angle and then copy and paste this data to a text file. So the data that I'm gonna send you is gonna be a series of 11 text files. Let's make one of these right now. Let's pick an angle. Um, actually, let's just do zero degrees first. And I, I provide a figure in here of what zero degrees would be. Zero, oh yeah, zero degrees is just X is pointed parallel to gravity. X acceleration equals zero. Yep, that's the one I want. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to replicate that situation. Okay, so I'm just holding it. And then we are going to, let's go to the serial monitor. And, okay, for some of these orientations, it's collecting five seconds of data. It's kind of redundant. Like, what? why, why I say collect a couple seconds of data is in the lab, if, if somebody bumps the table, the value is gonna change. Um, and so collecting five seconds just gives you a chance to get some, like an average reading. So what I do is I turn off the auto scroll feature and then I just like copy a bunch of readings. So you can actually just control C. So I'm, I press control C to copy that data. And then I'm going to paste it into a text file. And I'm gonna save this as um, like accelerometer zero degrees data. All right. Let's just put that in there. And then what students are doing on campus in the lab is they're repeating this process for a bunch of different configurations. So if we do, what's another one that we need? 1g so if we have x pointing straight down that should be equal to 1g of acceleration let's see what that one looks like so i have that pointing straight down let's turn back on auto scroll okay so now the reading is 260. i'm going to turn off auto scroll for a second grab a bunch of these data points and then I'm gonna save a new text file. And um, I'll rename these, I'll, I'll name these files in a more consistent way for you guys. But I'm just calling it accelerometer 1G for now. Okay, so let's say we calculate or, or we get a bunch of these measurements. Let's go back over here to the I want to show you how we actually do the calibration now. Let's go over here. Okay, so let's take acceleration on this axis and then the corresponding ADC reading on this axis. And I think we try, depending on the angle that you have the accelerometer in, it's gonna be measuring some negative values. So maybe we'll put minus one G here, one G here, zero Gs, and then maybe something in between like 0.5 Gs minus 0.5 Gs. And then for each of these, I'm just making up something right here. 
Like maybe the, I think the ADC reading for zero Gs, wait, for one G, I think it was 260. Oh, so maybe I, I think this trend might be opposite actually. So maybe it actually does something like this. Cause I think it got bigger. So this was like 260 and so on. But you're gonna see a trend. And this should be basically linear. And you're gonna be able to fit this with some line like y equals mx plus b where the, the y variable is the acceleration and the x variable is the ADC reading. So this calibration equation, it gives you like a conversion factor. So now in my Arduino code, when I get an ADC reading, I can backtrack out what the acceleration is. But remember, the warning that I gave at the beginning. The, the accelerometer actually gives, like this acceleration is the inertial plus the gravitational. So it, unless you can subtract out the gravitational acceleration from this, it's hard to know exactly what the inertial acceleration is. Okay, but that being said, there's something at the end of the procedure that I have you do. Let's, let's go here. So, okay, after we record all the 11 angles, what we're gonna do is place the accelerometer face down on the lab table so that its X direction is parallel to the table's surface. And what this means is that there's no gravity actually acting on the accelerometer at this point because X is just orthogonal to that direction. So gravity's not acting in that direction, so we're only recording inertial accelerations. And let's record some data of sliding the accelerometer back and forth on the table. So we're literally going to take the accelerometer like like this which way is the x so x is like pointing along the direction of my index finger and so it's pretty much level and then we're just going to do something like this some general motions don't rub too hard on the table um, but then after you record this data you're going to be able to convert that into actual inertial accelerations and I don't have you do this in the lab procedure but if you wanted you could like take that data into MATLAB you could integrate it and you could convert it to velocity and you could even convert it to position like a fun exercise to do is like if you have a ruler you can move the accelerometer like along the length of the ruler I know, I know, Phil's like, no, 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 integration. I know, you hate it. No, you're probably fine at it now. You've done it a couple times. But, but you would see that if I move it along the length of the ruler and I integrated that accelerometer data, it would come back out to be the distance that I moved it on the table. I mean, that's what we use accelerometers for, to like predict motion and, and stuff like that among other things so that is something you you can do with the data maybe i'll give you a data set like that i think that'd be i'll give you the option to to try that out if you want um but that that's that's basically the gist of it we're applying known accelerations to this using gravity. We're building a plot to see what those relationships look like. And then we're
plotting a regression curve. It's going to look linear. And then that regression is the key to unlocking the accelerations this sensor is experiencing as you gather data from it. And that's it. Uh, hey, Dr. S, what tablet do you use in your classes? And is it good for studying? I use the Microsoft Surface. Looks like this. Like in you can attach a keyboard and, and uh, detach it. And I, I love this thing. I've had it for four or five years now. I use it for taking notes. It runs MATLAB and everything. I, I would recommend it. Yeah, I very much, I very much enjoy this. And guys, that's basically, that's basically what I wanted to share with you. I'll hang around for a couple minutes to like take any other questions. But that's, that's the overview of the situation. It's always great hanging out with you on Monday night. Going over some workshops, lab stuff. And I hope you guys are doing well. You're hanging in there. Hey, thanks for doing these extra streams. Really helpful, even for in person. Hey, I appreciate you saying that, Drewlish. I'll keep it up. I'll try to keep these informative and useful. Thank you guys for your participation. Thanks for coming and hanging out. You can always come back to this video later. Um, let me know how I can make it more helpful. Hey, you're welcome, Mildew. Uh, Alien says, I'm not enrolled with this course, but I'd like to see these classes anyways. What sensors are you using? So we've played with, um, we, we made a little photo resistor voltage divider so we're measuring light intensity um so the ex we just started a couple weeks ago so we're we're just beginning but we've used an accelerometer now we're going to use an ultrasonic range sensor we're going to start playing with some different motors as well just basic dc motor servo motor stepper motor and how to use those on Arduino. What else are we gonna do? I can't even remember right now. But yeah, a couple different uh, sensors and actuators. leave it here for tonight I wish you a good Monday night a good rest of your week I hope you're hanging in there any recent issues with discord I don't think so is there something wrong with discord alien says I found your classes uh, typing digital control on Twitch just to see what it would bring me. Hey, I appreciate that, Alien. I really, uh, I'm really glad you like it. Phil, you can't log in even for other classes. Wait, how long have you not been able to log in, though? I know you emailed me a little while back saying Discord was giving you trouble. Is it still? It's been working.
All semester. Phil, I think it's just you. Is it just your account? Because I remember you were able to use Discord. Yeah, it was. It worked last semester. Do you know anything that changed? You get oops errors with no info. Uh, maybe, maybe it's worth trying a different web browser if you're doing it in, on. Uh, like I'm using Chrome. I don't know if that makes a difference. Googling it right now? Yeah, I don't. But yeah, I. Everybody, I, I think you're using Chrome. Okay. That's really weird. links to a discord server might expire I don't know if that's the issue you're having but I think the link for our class at least it's still I think I don't think I put an expiration on it so that one should always work Five minutes ago for late. What the heck? Uh, one thing you might try, Phil, like if it's your computer that's giving you trouble, maybe get the Discord app on your phone and just see if it works. That's worth a try. Just to try something else. sign off. Enjoy your evening.